We're under a high wind alert, but nature's power can give way to another power, electron power, because this is Project E mountain bike, or just Project E. I've been holding on to this for a while, but now it's ready. This is stage one for Project E. I've done a little bit to this, but before I get into it, I want to tell you this frame and this motor. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about the design of this. This is a design frame. It's not an off-the-shelf frame. And the guy that designed this designed some other, was on the design team, I believe leading the design team, for some other bikes you might know, Schwinn Axum, Schwinn Axum DP. But this one built to be a dedicated e-mountain bike. And at the time, at least that I became aware of this, and I believe when I got my hands on it, it was a prototype but now a production, but this one, just think of it as a frame and a motor. So let me show you what I have here. With Project E, I'm gonna start up top like I usually do with the handlebars. I'll have to put the width on your screen, but diameter 31.8, came with a 50 millimeter stem, the stem, check out that top cap. I always like unique looking top caps. I like that one. The computer display, because of course, this is an E mountain bike controllable via a little small switch over here by the left grip. I can go down to zero power, which by the way, I don't even know what the bike means. But the zero there, that's U power. And I did pedal this yesterday. I rode it for, I don't know, maybe we rode four or five miles. And for at least two of that, I rode this without power. Now, most of that was downhill, but I did pedal it uphill without power. So people that say, E-mountain bikes make you lazy. I disagree. This thing's 50 pounds, 50 plus pounds. But this is the control switch, up, down, and the power button. There are settings, but I can't go in and change the top speed setting. I already looked. It has E, it has T, I'm assuming Eco and Turbo. Then S for Sport, there's a Sport Plus, and then the B is Boost. And this Boost setting's a little unique on this. This is a torque based sensor. Get into the motor in just a moment. But that boost setting, it's kind of like an e-bike with a rear hub motor where when you ride it and you pedal and you stop pedaling, there's that half a second of extra boost. That's what that does. Kind of unique. It also has a shift interrupter, but this is currently a nine speed setup and it's going to stay nine speed because in stage two, I'll be attacking back there. It's Olivio currently Tektro brakes, Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. We'll look at those further in just a second. And the branding up top, that's because of this fork. That was the sticker that came with this fork. I'm super happy with this fork. I added it. This is a Marzaki. I've always said Marzaki, but apparently it's Marzaki, Marzoki, however you want to say it. The M fork. This is a Bomber Z2. And this particular one, E optimized 34 millimeter stanchions 140 millimeters of travel it even came with the adapters or the spacers whatever you want to call them to adapt it I believe down to 120 I can do 130 I think maybe even 110 or 100 and those were Fox branded because Fox owns Marzaki as far as I understand this has a rebound control it does have that whole Fox rail thing get to the other side though that's where the controversy will start, aside from just being an e-bike or an e-mountain bike. Because I left this on there, that little red protector on this through axle, this boost through axle, 15 by 110. And the reason I left that is because if the Chrysler people can drive around with those little skid things on the front of their car, so much so that dealers now charge them to not take them off, figure I can leave that on and maybe start a style trend with the red protector on a front skewer handle. We'll see how far that goes. But for now, just know Bomber Z2 E optimized, 140 millimeters of travel. Double wall alloy rims. I forget the internal spacing. I'll see if I can put it on your screen. But I rewrapped this. It came with Maxxis Recon Race. I put Schwalbe Knobby Nicks because I like the knobs. They are a perfect fit for out here at Wildwood. And I think they look good. It came with the tan walls, skin walls, whatever you want to call them. So I went back with that. I think it looks really good. 
kind of sets off the bike and there'll be another accent in stage two that plays on that. I'll go ahead and talk about the frame. From the factory, a 67 degree head tube angle. It's either 67 or 67.5. I'll have to look back through my notes. Of course, that slackened a bit now with that 140 up front, which I was worried about when I bought that fork. It was supposed to be 130. And then I noticed in the shipping documents it said 140. They assured me it was 130, but I've measured it. It's 140, but that slackens things up. It's still a perfect fit. It rides so, so well. As a matter of fact, this fork, I made a mistake. You know how you come up to those jumps? Or not a jump, but a little hop on the trail. And usually there's an easy way around a flat way or to take the hop. And I came up to it and I just misjudged it. I got caught in a mental break where I was thinking, do I want to take it? Do I not want to take it? Well, I ended up kind of splitting it in the middle and I came down front wheel first and it was like on a cloud. Just this soft cushion, that's what this fork has done. And even with the geometry changing, it still feels so good. I was told that this was made to accept up to a 130 without any ride changes. The 140 does work, so I like that. This is an aluminum frame, it says so down here, 6061 aluminum frame kind of a pewter to black it's a really good look i like it a lot internal cable routing beautiful beautiful frame a single chain ring coming out of that torque drive motor that mid-base torque drive more on that in a second i did put fuker pedals on this and these are fukers you saw in a recent video with the needle bearings and i had bond triggers on this the orange bond triggers and i gotta tell you i like race face chesters and i like fukers but those bond triggers were just ever so slightly larger and it felt so good that it's taken me a couple of rides to settle back into these, but I do believe I'm gonna leave those on there. From front to back, this is a cassette, a Shimano cassette. I forget the gear range on this, but you know, it's an e-mountain bike. Gear ranging less important. Top speed on this, 20 miles per hour, assisted. So that's enough, I'll just leave it there. It is a cassette. Shimano Olivio down here. This is unclutched and you know kind of basic. I was told it was made to be upgraded and it does need upgraded. It regularly drops chains and by regularly I mean two or three times per ride but oddly enough never when I'm on anything super rough. There's the Shimano. I knew it was on there somewhere. Never on anything super rough. It's usually just on some little something that I'm wondering how it happened. And a couple of times, it's really been twisted up there, so apparently this chain is super, super tough. And I talked to another e-bike rider recently that asked me what this was. That's a shift interrupter. He said he kept seeing a red light on the night ride. And that's my shift interrupt sensor that will briefly cut power when I change gears. He didn't have that, which I thought was weird. Every e-bike, every e-mountain bike, or e-bike in general that I've ridden has had a shift interrupter least that I can recall but he had a really expensive one that didn't so yay here I guess now oh, and more knobby Nick another good look at these tires that ride so well this came with the dropper post with the remote up front right by that selector I did change the grips these are fun branded grips though I like these I have them on my project ledge bike I have orange ones I'm thinking about changing these because on this heavier bike I'm riding faster, riding harder. It's starting to get a little sore after some of the rides. Of course, I am riding longer, so that could be it. But I might change these, but for now, they at least look good, and they're something custom. Now let's get to the good parts. We'll start with what's hiding in here. The battery is in here. It is removable. There's a key lock on the other side. There's the charge port. I learned on my first ride to make sure that that is seated up. I was on the back side of the trail and I hit a hop and this popped off hasn't happened since I made sure it was seated well but this is where the battery is housed this is a 48 volt bike and that's a 720 watt hour battery this bike has some range 40 miles worth at max assist give or take and the power output amazing this is a Bafang M510 as far as I understand, this was, if not the, one of the first frames that came into the United States made for this power plant. And it has, I think, 
it was 90 newton meters of torque it's something crazy high i'll have to look it up it's way powerful i've never ran into anything on this any other e-mountain bike that i've been on or variation of a bike called an e-mountain bike i have been able to get the motor to shudder and what i mean by that is if you're riding up a hill and you hit a root and you come to that dead stop and it's uphill and you go to pedal and apply power the motor just can't do it this will pull right over everything even at the lower assist settings it is a super powerful motor super smooth i haven't had any overheating issues and i've been riding this since i believe august ish it was still hot when i started out on this baking hot here in alabama heat and it's about to be really hot again and so far no problem whatsoever and it's kept up with some really expensive e-mountain bikes i can pass them uphill very very good of course here class one 250 watt it's a torque based mid drive so don't pay attention people get hung up on that 250 watts well that's not enough oh i can assure you this will hold its own out on the trail very very capably very nice system buffang good stuff fukers also good stuff fukers with needle bearings even though those bond trager ones were very very footy nice to the foot let's look now at the brakes 180 millimeters and if you're wondering why that one rotor bolt is miscolored well that story actually starts back here where i have a lot of different colors and i did this on purpose the only two black ones are the two that stayed on i don't know if it was something i just failed to check or i suspect because i did talk with the guy that designed this bike about changing out the rotors to shimano rotors because i thought it was just these tectro rotors but it turns out it's just e-mountain bikes in general because you're so much tougher on brakes they're having to bite in so much harder i was riding with someone on a very expensive mountain bike last night and i noticed their brakes were making that same bitey sound so i'm not going to switch the rotors but they do have can you hear that that ding i don't know why they're not loose anymore but they've always maintained that ding these tectro brakes and that's not just on this bike on many bikes i don't know why but long story of this i rode this with only two bolts on the rotor i shared a short on it when you're out on the trail with your friends or at least people you know and your bike starts making noise and you wonder where it's coming from and you know it's not the derailleur what's that sound yeah and you start realizing there are only two bolts holding partially holding your rear rotor on yeah crazy stuff and those were the two or this one and another one on the other side somewhere up in there the only two that were held in place so i kept them but now they're definitely loctited and torqued in and i found one that was loose up front and that's that other colored one so now you know the story there by the way this is a through axle on the back as well and that's project e my e mountain bike project think of it as just a frame and a motor that i have now started building out and i have more to do not a lot more it's pretty much about where i want it to be but gosh this thing rides so good and if anyone says you don't need an e-mountain bike or they're cheating i assure you they're not by the way miami fruit i buy bananas from there gros michel the original popular bananas from back in the well back in the day they're the only ones that i know of in the united states you can still get them from there i'm a customer so i'll put their sticker on the bike and i've kind of kev central did though i don't have a kev central sticker on it just yet mainly because i went with red and my stickers are all orange so until i get a white one <laughs> i'll leave it like this but that's project e stage one stay tuned for stage two now i want you to tell me what you think about this a good bike right and i would edit in i might edit in a little bit of ride footage here but I've already shown you some night ride footage where I was on this. I think it's been in a couple of other videos. There's going to be so much more coming as soon as I get that drivetrain changed out, which is the main thing for stage two. That's going to go. I'm going to get a clutch, but I'm sticking with nine speed. So it'll kind of tip off to some regular viewers. What I'm putting there and the shifter just came in today. 
there's Project E. Let me know what you think. I hope you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And have a great day. And now I'm going to go ride. And hopefully no limbs are going to fall on me. Because the wind's starting to pick up. We're right at the peak warning time. There's my trail. Oh, and by the way, there is a magnet behind that sign. If you're right out here, grab that. And the other spot, the button that I have, I showed that in another video. I'll link down in the description. There's a button. I just replenished it. And I hit a button on the other side, on the ranger side. And I'll give you a teaser pick of roughly where it is if you find that. And I'm working on something with the buttons, some redemption codes, a website link, and so on. So there you go. Thanks for watching and have a great day like I am because I'm riding something super awesome that I really do like.